Hello there, I'm Offy D, and this is Long War 2, aka XCOM 2 with the Long War mod. In this series, I'll be bringing you the most exciting and important moments from my campaign through this game slash mod. We're doing it on Iron Man mode to make it extra annoying if something goes wrong, and I'm actually playing with some custom game settings to try and make the war a bit less long. I read it was a uh, long, miserable experience playing this game. So I've tried to modify it to make it a bit easier, but more specifically, faster to play. I'll put a full rundown in the description and mention things as they come up in the gameplay. We're going to be ignoring the story because it doesn't really matter, especially in the mod. Plus the story is trash, debate me. And I'm going to assume a bit of familiarity with how XCOM works and really skip over a lot of the things that don't matter too much to how these stages progress. So we're very much just jumping into things here with this mod. Here are some guys and we're going to fight some aliens. That's just how we're starting this campaign off and we'll get into why later on. Last time I did an XCOM series, I named all the characters after characters in my other series. But this time, to make it a bit less confusing hopefully, most of the characters are named after famous figures from military history. There's me as well by the way. And also many of the characters are gender swapped to make it less of a giant sausage fest, which characters from military history would end up being. Anyway, so we're getting started. Our mission here is just to ambush some enemies and kill guys on this map to get this war started, really. So let's just do it. Genghis Khan throws a grenade, and that immediately kills two enemies and damages an officer. Very nice. The rest of the squad is on Overwatch. That means they'll shoot at anything that moves that they can see. That officer goes down right away, and then everyone else fires at the little sentry drone that was there as well, but we get plenty of misses, so that wasn't particularly good. Luckily enough, our final shot does take it down, so bang, successful ambush, we've taken out an enemy squad, but there are more squads on the map for us to find. Because the ambush is over, and this is now just a straight up fight, they can find us by just walking over and spotting that there's a bunch of guys with guns in the street, and a fight begins. This time it's against only two enemies, so that's not so bad. But they're just in an annoying position, I was going mostly to the up and right of this screen. So having them in the up and left means we're sort of outflanked. So now I have to start repositioning to get some good shots on those guys. However, we're now punished for that. XCOM is a game that likes to very much punish being aggressive. So by moving up towards the enemy, I've allowed other enemies to see me. And now I'm facing a much bigger enemy team. In this case, we do have that sectoid outflanked. However, I'm going to fall back from this position because I'm going to play things as safely as possible. We're going to fall back to a heavier cover position where we're much more likely to survive. And one thing I've done in my customization of this mod is to increase the amount of defensive bonus you get from being in heavy cover, both for XCOM and for the aliens. So it's more important to use heavy cover, or at least you're less likely to die if you do use it, so it's worth going for. We also though do need to outflank the aliens in general to have any chance of hitting them. So John Wick on our right flank will start doing that. In the middle, Offy D manages to get an outflanking shot against the sectoid who was in bad cover. And then we get a grenade over there, which, well, I say it kills the sentry in the sectoid. They actually just died of shock and then the grenade went off over their corpses, but it got the job done. So now the enemy are less spread out, it's going to be easier to face them. But one thing to remember with XCOM is if you kill enemies with grenades, they don't drop stuff. So it's better to try not to do it, even though it is often the easier option. Now the enemy have a grenadier among this first squad and they launch a flashbang into our team. That means several guys are disorientated, I think this reduces their shooting accuracy and movement range for the next turn. They almost outflank us on the left, but don't quite manage to do it. One thing to note is that in Long War, normally the cover system is simplified compared to normal XCOM, where as long as the enemy aren't outflanking you, you're considered to be in full cover. But in my custom version, I've re-enabled what happens in regular vanilla XCOM, where if the enemy almost have you outflanked, then that still sort of counts and they still get an accuracy bonus and you get it against them of course so it's just a bit more flexible. I'm gonna use a flashbang there to remove the overwatch on two enemy soldiers before we get moving for our offensive turn. I mostly just walked about and tried to get better positions but we did get one decent attack. Rommel here gets up to the car where Wick was hiding out and gets a flanking move on an enemy, killing him with a critical and one thing to note is that perhaps the biggest change in my customization of the mod is to double critical damage and slightly increase the chance of getting criticals if you outflank the enemy. This is to encourage rushing basically, it's now in my favour 
to play the game fast and loose and try to just get around enemies because I'm more likely to actually kill them if I do. We'll see whether that actually speeds the game up as I hope. We get another decent flank in the next turn where Shea Kavara goes out to the far left and takes down an enemy, probably the best place for him I'd say. And that left only two enemies sitting there over by that building. They've gone into Overwatch again. I could flashbang them to take it off, but for some reason I really didn't want to. I wanted to attack this turn. Luckily I can use this car to move out of their line of sight with Rommel and get a grenade onto the guy with more health and more cover. So we blow that up. Now he is exposed, so someone looks like Offy D moves up to take the shot and gets a kill. As for the other guy, I grenaded the building he was in so that there was a hole in the wall, and then Che Guevara does another classic far left move and brings him down with the crit. So there we have it, the mission is over. A pretty successful ambush and a battle that went quite well. We didn't take any damage at all, and that's very important for the first mission. As I now know, this is my second attempt to play this mod. Before when I played it, basically everybody got wounded and the game was over almost as soon as it begun because the wound times are very long. Anyway, we're all back alive and all of the rookie class characters, which is everyone, gets promoted to their actual class where they start getting specializations. As for stuff to do at home, I'm probably not going to cover it that much, but I started off by doing some generic research and building the Guerrilla Tactics Center, a useful building at the beginning for unlocking things. I'll generally talk about all that as it becomes relevant. Now because we're playing the Long War, the actual campaign is different to Vanilla. We have all this stuff that we have to manage. We're managing the resistance basically, unlike in XCOM 2 Vanilla, the resistance is less of an abstract concept, it's more of an actual thing in the game. The issue they're going to have is that now I'm in charge of them, and obviously I don't know what I'm doing. Feel free to backseat game me on that, by the way, it will be too late, but do it anyway, just for fun. So yes, we're going to sit around now and try to trigger another mission, and this is done by just scanning at bases, and also you can task resistant elements with intel gathering, and that unlocks new missions as well. The mission system is different compared to vanilla. The main difference is this idea of infiltration, where you don't just go on a mission, you pick missions as they come up, choose which ones you think will be useful for you, and then send squads to start researching and getting ready for it, and then eventually that mission will begin. And multiple missions can be going on at the same time. So you can see here I've split our recruits into various squads and you can send different squads out to investigate different missions and at the top right you can see this infiltration time idea. This is how long it will take to get the mission down to a workable point. You can just go on a mission at any time without infiltrating, but the game is balanced so that it's basically impossible to do that and you should only do it if you're forced to. What you want to do is try and get to 100% infiltration and then the mission will be of reasonable intended difficulty or something and you can just go on it without expecting an absolute slaughter. So there we go, we dump a support to start preparing that mission and now we just sit around and look for other missions to go on. Soon enough we've got one and it's a good one as well, one where the reward for doing it is you get an engineer and one thing you need to do in general is collect engineers and scientists since they allow you to get various passive buffs and just generally make progress in the game as a whole, so definitely one we want to go on. Gonna send my third squad because it's full of noobs and I need some experience basically. Looks like there's enough time to pretty much infiltrate and get everything down to a reasonable difficulty, so off they go. In the meantime, I researched the thing that lets you make contact with other regions, so I started working on that. Then another mission came up, but this was a curious one. It says the mission expires in zero days, zero hours. That means, in essence, you can't infiltrate. What I thought it meant was the game was glitched, and that surely it doesn't mean zero days, it means ten days or something. So I actually did send a squad on it, but it just forced me to attack right away with extreme difficulty. So I was like, no, we'll just pull them back and not risk whatever would happen in there. So anyway, that happens. And then a while later, while still trying to make contact with Eastern Asia, the first mission we prepared is ready. We need to rescue a bunch of guys to join the resistance in the area that will level up our base in the area and do various good things that I guess I'll talk about if I need to. But this mission starts off in a particularly interesting way. The very first move I make is with Azumi here, who runs up to stand on a platform to get a view of the area, but there was a drone on top. The drone sees her, and this also aggros in a couple of guys down the road. It also reveals the rest of my squad, by the way, just because that's how XCOM works. 
Now this isn't a massive problem because I'm going to have to get revealed and fight the enemy at some point, but this isn't a very good point. It's nice to start the fighting when the enemy is right in front of you and you can just immediately kill a bunch of them before anything else happens. So we're doing this in the hardest possible way, unfortunately. There's not much we can do against the two guys in the distance because they're too far away to attack this turn. But Attili does take out the drone that was by Azumi with a nice shot there, so that's a start. The issue is, now that it's the enemy's turn, we're going to be in trouble because Azumi is technically not in cover, even though the enemies have to shoot through cover to hit her there. Just because of how the game works, if she's not crouching beside something, she doesn't get cover bonuses. She's considered to be in the open, and so she's very likely to get hit. And in this mod, the aliens are particularly effective at long range. And as you can see, Azumi gets hit twice and is killed. Very bad news. And also, Attili panics seeing her die, so she can't act in the next turn just to make things a bit harder. If this was a regular playthrough, we could perhaps just start the mission again. But we are Iron Manning this hardcore, so we're just going to take the loss and move on. Our revenge will begin right away, because one of those enemies isn't in very good cover, so we can really easily outflank him. We get the crit here with Saladin, and that's the end of him. We can't make any more attacks this turn though, and now it's time for the alien turn. A drone comes in and shoots some sort of beam at John Wick, so now he is debuffed. He has the disorientation thing with low movement and low accuracy. The other enemy gets into heavy cover, shoots, and fortunately misses. Now while John Wick is debuffed, he has this sawn off shotgun ability that lets you attack things at point blank range, and it immediately kills the drone. So there we go, he still made a good showing for himself. As for the regular enemy, we're going to take him out the easy way. We can use a grenade launcher to just blow him up, and that extra blows him up because the car explodes as well. It does mean we don't get any drops from him, of course. The fight doesn't end there, though, because two more enemies aggro in immediately after that in that building on the left. So now we have to fight them. And I'm just not going to pull any punches here. <laughs> I shoot another grenade with Saladin, trying to open up the wall so I could see them a bit better, but it's not enough. It damages the first enemy, so I throw another grenade with Genghis Khan, who's a bit closer, to kill him. That just means we've only got one enemy left, and while we're not getting loot from this, we're just not going to risk anything here. It's not worth the risk of even being fired at once, because you might lose an operative. So anything we can do to annoy the enemy is good for us, even if we don't get loot. The other enemy fell back, and when I pursued him with Genghis Khan, I discovered three more enemies who are actually right where the guys were supposed to be rescuing are, so we need to come here anyway. Genghis can't really do anything in this situation, so he's just going to hide, and I spent a turn moving the rest of the team up. Fortunately, the enemy didn't do anything, they just sat there in overwatch. We're going to clear that up with some flashbangs and now start moving into position to attack. I thought I'd mention at this point, by the way, that in my commentary here I'm cutting out all the attacks that don't do damage both from me and from the enemy and most of the movement to make things nice and quick. So there's an example of the sort of thing I normally wouldn't have bothered telling you about. I fired at an enemy and missed so nothing happened. So yes, while it seems like I'm not using all my characters in each turn it's because they're just not doing anything important and that's just how I'm cutting this to keep things moving along. Here's a more important move, Attili the Honey is moving across the roof here and manages to get a somewhat good angle on the Sectoid. The Sectoid's in heavy cover, but you can see very briefly in the bottom left there, I get a bonus to shooting against it because it's not really in cover from my perspective. That's the thing that Long War 2 normally wouldn't let you do. Plus you get extra accuracy for being on a roof, Long War 2 also nerfs that, but I put it back to vanilla. I think you get plus 20% chance for shooting from above. Anyway, so that does some damage. In the next turn, we get a flashbang down on the enemy again because they're still just standing there and overwatching against us. But we've got John Wick and Napoleon moving up the road on the enemy flank and they finally get close enough to start making attacks. John Wick downs one of the enemies very quickly. Then I make a really cheeky move with Genghis Khan who's just been hiding on that corner for a while. He runs up and kills one of the other guys using a sword. Very risky, but that move happens to put him in heavy cover with respect to the sectoid, so it was actually a pretty good move to make in general, and we killed the enemy as well, so not a bad use of the usually very dodgy melee attack system. In the next turn, the sectoid wasted its turn by just reanimating a corpse, and John Wick, who was already on its flank, could just move up and kill it at close range. So that's that, those enemies are cleared out and we can get to the prisoners. We do a bit of a hack 
to open up the doors. I did this with Genghis Khan, it's better to do it with someone who's good at hacking to see if you can get one of the little bonuses you sometimes get with a hack. But I just did it with the first guy who got there because I wasn't really paying attention. And then we completed the mission with no further issues. There were no more enemies, so just had to spend ages walking to the extraction point, which is very annoying. So we win, however, we have taken a permanent casualty in the form of Azumi. At least we're at the start of the game, this is really the only acceptable time to take casualties. If you take them later in XCOM in general, you just have to start the game again. It's one of those things. You can't really recover from taking too many casualties. So we'll just have to see what we can do. Now, right after that mission, the other mission we set up becomes available, or gets to 100%, that is. So we're going to go on this one as well. This is the more important one, because we really need that engineer in order to build anything in our base. In this mission, we start with the engineer already with our squad, and we just have to move across this town to get her out. For some reason, not sure why we didn't pick her up in the first place when we arrived. But there are some enemies in the way, as you might expect, so let's get fighting. We're up on this building as we first encounter the enemy, and that's pretty good. We're going to get some nice height advantages, and here we can easily outflank one of the enemies who took cover in a bad position with respect to us. There was an enemy down there on Overwatch, by the way, but Overwatch doesn't trigger on the first tile where they can see you, I think. So you can run towards the enemy, and as long as they don't see you until you stop, they won't fire at you. There's another example. I was getting into position, hoping to fire down with a good angle at the guy in cover and kill him. But this actually triggers two more guys to join the fight, and now they're in a position to outflank us up on the roof, which is pretty annoying. So we need to be a bit more subtle here and get things done. What I wanted to do was put Darius the Great facing these new enemies, but that overwatching guy shoots through a wall and a couple of floors and knocks out Darius's armor. You can take two points of damage without it counting as a wound, so now he's in the danger zone. He did outflank an enemy, but the damage was bad. That wasn't what I was looking for, so we're still in danger here. I throw a grenade down at the guy in the bus shelter. We're not going to have any more of his nonsense. The grenade removes his cover, and then Rommel, who's sneaking around the left side of the building, comes in and absolutely blasts him away. So there we go. Now we can focus more concretely on one direction. However, that guy down there comes up to the building, shoots through the walls and floors, and hits Darius again. He's having a real hard time with XCOM's very iffy line-of-sight calculations. He's now almost dead, which means he's useless to us. Once we get back to the Avenger, back to the campaign map, he'll be wounded for a month or so at least. So we won't be seeing him again for a long time. But we can still use him for this mission, so might as well. The guy who got close to the building is so close that we can just jump down and kill him easily and Darius throws a grenade to take out the officer that was over there. Next, we just need to shuffle up towards the extraction point. As we do so, a couple more guys just casually stroll in from the left. One of them gets annihilated right away. Your weapons do have like a sound stat in the game, but I guess the sounds they make don't travel very far because enemies relatively nearby tend not to notice when fights are going on. Anyway, so the first guy is dead and the second guy just gets annihilated since we can easily outflank him. And that's that. Now we're going to continue on towards the extraction point again. And it's actually pretty close, so I thought we could get there without seeing any more enemies. But actually there are two enemies right next to it. At least it's only two. Basically if it hadn't been 100% infiltration, like it had been 60%, there would be five enemies instead of two. So that's the way it makes it harder if you don't wait for the infiltration. So as for these enemies, they're too far away for us to attack and they're in great cover, but I can use this suppression ability with Rommel. That means they now can't really move, and it gives them a debuff, I think, to their shooting accuracy. However, that doesn't stop them from shooting Rommel. He loses his armor, and it stops the suppression from working, but at this stage, we need to move up on them anyway. Rommel moves up and tries a grenade. I thought I could destroy that thing they're hiding behind, because then we'd easily take them out, but two grenades don't do it. We've damaged both enemies, at least. With grenades, it doesn't matter if you don't kill them with the grenade, because that way you can still get the loot later on, so just damaging them is fine. In this case, we couldn't get any more damage this turn, so I used a flashbang to debuff them. This, by the way, killed a zombie that the sectoid had reanimated. That's a handy tip that I didn't know about that will come in useful later on in this campaign, actually. The enemy spend their turn just firing at Sao Susan, who was nearby, but missing with all the debuffs on them. And now they're in trouble, because we can finally get into position to outflank them, since they still haven't moved. Rommel comes in with the minigun and annihilates the sectoid. 
As for the other guy, I run up with Sao Susan and get a point blank range attack. <laughs> Nearly misses, but there we go. We blow that guy's face out so hard, we actually take his eyes. That is brutal. With that, there are no more enemies left on the map, so we just gradually go over and extract. There we go, another pretty good mission. No casualties, but one wounded. Darius is now out of the game for the next 28 days. That means he's not going to be gaining experience or anything. So he'll be much less useful by the time he comes back into service, but maybe we'll still need him and we'll use him. We'll see. Because we've got an engineer from that, we can use the engineer to speed up the construction of the guerrilla training school. And after that, we're able to open more building slots, which you can't do without an engineer. So this is a nice bit of progress in the game. Also speaking of progress, we finally get the next contact done. So now we have two bases. We've got one in India and one in Eastern Asia, and we do need to manage them both. And I'm going to try and use some sort of strategy here. No idea if this is a good strategy, but I thought I won't bother gathering intel in the bases that aren't India for now. That will mean the missions we do will mainly spawn in India and be close together. So we don't spend much time going to and from missions and just generally setting things up. And it means we can have more personnel working on getting us supplies in the other bases. But really, the amount of supplies you get is very low. And I found we actually get quite a few more supplies, or a much better source of supplies, by just selling random junk on the black market. Like in this case, I'm going to sell the Advent data pad, which was just something an enemy dropped, for 23 supplies. And that's about the same amount you'd make from a month of holding down a base, and you could just get those randomly in battles. So I'm thinking I'm going to make good use of that. I'm just going to sell loads of stuff and try not to hoard things in the inventory in case we need it. Like with that mindset, we'll just blow through things and try and have the money instead to get more buildings and buy the odd interesting thing like a new scientist or something. We complete the guerrilla tactics school that allows us to train our rookies into squaddies, unlocking their classes and making them less useless. Lots of those rookies, by the way, haven't had their uh, historical customization done. We'll do it as and when we need them. We can also use this school to unlock various miscellaneous passive buffs, and one of them is wet work, which doubles the XP you get from killing enemies, and the sooner you get that, the better. So I basically spend all my money getting that right now. We're going to make full use of that now for the rest of the game. So far, I With that, I will say goodbye to you for this part. This will be the end of the first part of the Bridge campaign. We We've covered the first, I don't know, one and a half to two hours of gameplay, but, but there's still plenty to more to come in this long war as we just go on more and more missions and gradually work our way through the research tree and find ways to actually bring down the aliens in a more permanent fashion and thus go on more important missions. So, will you join me to see how that goes? Yes, you will. See you there.